you got slightly thrown under the bus by the winner of the first in Exeter. It couldn't have been the harder name that was your first debut on Racing TV to try and pronounce, but you did a very steady job. Would have liked you to have been a bit more enthusiastic about Brian Cooper and Noel Mead, but that's just personal opinion. Hello and welcome along to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV and a brilliant week of, of, of racing that we've had and, and plenty going on with both of us uh, over the last week, uh, none more so than I made my Racing TV debut. Andrew, did you watch it? Oh, I watched it in full, Josh. I was absolutely loving it. You got slightly thrown under the bus by the winner of the first in Exeter. It couldn't have been the harder name that was your first debut on racing tv to try and pronounce but you did a very steady job would have liked you to have been a bit more enthusiastic about brian cooper and Noel Mead, but that's just personal opinion <laughs> what did you think of, uh, of sabrina could you tell that i'd uh, backed her at wincanton yeah very much so look it's a very ordinary novice hurdle we're rocking up to here in exeter and josh gives it the big and Sabrina looking to get back after a heartbreaking defeat at wincanton <laughs> <laughs> that's your biggest day. of your people there thinking yeah, she got beaten in a naught to one fifteen or something. What's he going on about? Anyway, um, best bets did very very well. You backed your darling, who won at fifteen to two. I had Boot Hill at nine to two. Jungle Pros won again, eleven to four. Rapper placed for you at sixteen to one, and then the nap of the weekend: Farcia Dulage, Brian Cooper, and Noel Mead, eleven to one. That was seriously good guy. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Look, it was a good weekend for the two of us, which is great. The, we, we did say the first couple of weeks we were a little bit sluggish. I think we were slow from the traps. But the last couple of weeks we've really hit a bit of form. And that's fantastic to see. And fingers crossed it lasts for as long as possible. Because when we're both back in Best Bets winners, and I'm getting messages from people that have watched the show, they've backed the horse, there's actually no better feeling. It was about time that we did... I pull our finger out and, and we got a few winners on the board and the last couple of weeks have been good it was my first visit to Haydock as well for the Betfair Chase but thank you very much to everyone who came up uh, I was warmly welcomed up there and I uh, had a good chat with many of you uh, so that was much much appreciated and also we ran a ticket competition last week uh, it was LTR Creek all you had to do was comment uh, for tickets to go to the Tingle Creek at Sandown and the winner was Gary Norcott so Gary Norcott if you did uh, if you are watching this please do contact us on Twitter and we'll get those tickets sent out to you but if you do uh, want to be part of more competitions down the line do subscribe to the channel like this video as well and get your comments down below your thoughts on the weekend's racing that's just been as well as some of your best bets for the weekend but let's crack on we've got plenty of racing to get stuck into uh, we'll start at Haydock on Saturday and Hitman was the first big winner for Paul Nichols. I know he won the, the Newton Novice Hurdle at the start of the day but Hitman was the first big horse on show that day and I thought it was impressive. Now, all roads lead to the King George. Is he Brave Man's game biggest danger in the King George? Well, he's probably, he's definitely going to run, which is the, the first thing, because we've got a few Willie Mullins horses up in the air. Who's going to go, come over? Who's going to run? He did it very impressively. Now, you know, you can have your, your gripes potentially about some of the jockeys in behind. I think they gave Harry Copton a bit of a freebie. And considering he's a horse that perhaps is a little bit windy in a battle, I would have liked to have seen some horse try to maybe upset his rhythm. He won it as he probably should have. The rating suggested he should have won that easily. I still wouldn't be having him at grade one level. Not because I don't think he's a horse of enough ability. I think he is. But I just don't believe he's going to put his head down when it counts most if it's a tight finish. And I don't believe he's quite good enough to be winning a King George on the bridle. So I would still have Brave Man's game well ahead of him uh, in the Nichols duo. But it was a decent performance. And I suppose for a horse like that, he doesn't win too often. It was good to get him, get his head in front. I think he's got all the ability to be better than Brave Man's game. But I don't think he's there yet. I do think he's a seriously, seriously talented horse. A protector at one, the Betfair Chase. Aplutard, very disappointing, but I thought the writing was on the wall a long way from home. Yeah, very much so. After just a couple of fences, it was a listless run from Aplutard. Started jumping out to a right, out to his right, which is something he has done once or twice before, but I thought that had been ironed out and, you know, made some, you know, pretty puny headway coming into the home straight on the final time and quickly checked out of things. Protectorat was very good. Could you argue, though, I know a lot of people have, have said how good he was, and he was, and a great result for the Skeletons, but would he not have been entitled to have beaten those other horses the way he did based off what he's already achieved? No, I, I completely agree. I just think that the performance that he put up was a career best. Like, he was 
jumping department different gravy. Dan Skelton has such a good knack at getting horses to jump. I know, obviously, with his dad, a former Olympian show jumper, they were just incredible. When he gets them jumping, they are absolutely lethal, so quick, so accurate. The jumping at the back straight, Harry Skelton, I think he said it was the best feel he's ever had from a horse, and it looked like that way watching it on screen as well. I, I, I think he was a very good performance. The one thing I would say is there's three big days over here, really, in the jump season for three mile chases. You have the Betfair Chase, the King George, and the Gold Cup. I'd say Aintree's more of an afterthought. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes after the Gold Cup. I know some trainers have, have liked to stay clear of Cheltenham and go there and win that big prize. It's a very prestigious race, but it's not quite on the level of those three. And Dan Skelton's done very well because he's probably looked at this gun and gone, Aplutab might not be 100% fit, so we'll make sure that Protectorat is, is absolutely A1. He sent him there in the best form possible, and he's won very well. One thing I would say is Eldorado Allen was second. Uh, he was beaten 11 lengths by Protectorat, and on his previous start, he was only beaten three lengths by Brave Man's Game. Does that show a decent form line there for Protectorat? Yeah, it does so. I suppose you can look into those cross form lines as much as you want. Eldorado Allen's the type of horse that somewhat blows hot and cold, always runs an OK race, but... N never seems to, to win these big races. I know he won the Denman Chase last year, but that's been the re really the only one that, that's kind of ha happened for him over three miles. Look, it was a very good performance from Protectorat. I'm not trying to knock that. I'm just thinking that actually, based off his Gold Cup third, you would have hoped that he'd have beaten the other three horses the way he did, and the way he did it was impressive. It was a no-show on the track from Aplutar, but another superstar who didn't show up at all was Constitution Hill over at Ascot. What did you make of the whole ground fiasco there? Yeah, obviously disappointing for those that have gone to Ascot, paid their hard-earned money to go, and it was a bit of a farce of a car, to be honest. You know, walkovers, two-runner races, three-runner races. The overall essence of, of Constitution Hill not running doesn't do anything for me, you know, in terms of it was probably quickish ground. A lot of trainers had a similar opinion of it, and if he doesn't want to run, he doesn't want to run. He may run at Newcastle this Saturday, and we'll see him just a week later. The only thing, and I know some people have come out and said it, I think Nicky Henderson has to be a bit more clever with how he's he's phrasing these things because obviously we're, we're a sport that is looked down on, I think, at times by other sports and it doesn't help that one of your main protagonist trainers is coming out and kind of making big, big statements that if he'd run this horse that he'd have been unfit and he'd have been in his box wounded, I think he said to Matt Chapman. And yeah, they're going... Is that not a bit over the top? I think it may be. He's perfectly entitled to not run the horse, but I'd maybe just cool the jets slightly on, on all that animal welfare stuff he's going down. At the Newbury Gallops morning on Tuesday, Nicky Henderson did warn. He warned everyone. He spoke to me. He spoke to every other journalist there and said, he, we might not run him. He's actually 60-40 in favour of, of not running him. And the one thing I would say is immediately after, I even had a couple of messages from people that worked at Ascot. They were absolutely desperate to get in there. They were sending me the ground, um, saying that it's all going to be safe, it's all going to be fine. And so much so, they watered the night before, they put five mils on. I think the ground dried up so much. And because of Nicky Henderson's comments at the start of the week, when he said, if there's any firm in the going, we wouldn't run. Ascot specifically said it's good ground, didn't put firm in when I realistically think it probably was closer to good to firm. I understand why Edward Stone didn't run then on the Saturday and Alan King and Nicky Henderson would be very pally. And uh, if, if Edward Stone's being pulled out, Constitution Hill's being pulled out. It was a shame about Lahon Presse as well, but the writing was on the wall with him. We did get a massive deluge of rain, but I just don't think it properly got into the ground. I, I don't understand the ground conditions. I'm not acting like a, a grass expert or a turf expert. But I spoke to, to a, a clerk of the course, a different race course, and he basically said that the, the top layer was wet, yes, but the layer underneath was still pretty solid. But Goshen was the one that benefited from Constitution Hill not turning up. He won, and he is uh, an enigma, that horse. He beat Bruin Upper Storm. Do you think the ground was just too quick for Bruin Upper? Yeah, perhaps so. He, he ran a pretty poor race, to be honest. I'd say Ollie was very disappointed with that, given his, his form and the, and the horses he's running at the moment are in great nick. Uh, he had another double there today at Weatherby while we're recording. One of my favourites, No Risk Day Flows, won by half the track. So he's in good nick, but this horse didn't run his race. I said it a couple of weeks ago about Gosh, and I don't know why they don't try to farm these types of races, because he wins them. And they were, we're reinventing the wheel with him trying to go over fences. They should stick two miles, two and a half miles, grade twos, maybe even a grade one right-handed tracks. That's exactly where he's at his best, and he's very good. Moving over to Ireland on Saturday, Kilcrut made his chasing debut. I thought he was good, 
but I'd imagine Willie might have one or two better across multiple trips. Yeah, you, you tend to think that. I was impressed with the way he jumped, and I know it was a nothing type of race, but don't take it away to the horse called Willie Wampus, who I think is only rated 120 or something. He went a good clip. So at least Kilcrush was jumping at a bit of pace. Like, it wasn't an absolute farce of a race. Uh, but he jumped really well. I thought he'll have bigger tasks ahead. He might run in that grade three on uh, Moscow Flyer Day at Punchestown, I think. The two and a half mile race. That looks to be a race that may suit him. He seems to get on well with the course. And maybe that's where he'll go next. Did we see a potential smart novice hurdler in absolute notions for Gordon Elliott? I think we did. I was really, really impressed with this. I thought he was going to come third or fourth turning in and he found a different gear. And he probably needs staying trips. I know uh, from, from reading a few of the comments that he probably wants a bit of nicer ground as well. So maybe he's a springtime horse. But I was really impressed. I think the De Bromhead horse in second ran a good race and was well touted. Joshua De Flo's a nice horse back in third. I think he'll be good form and he's won very impressively. Yeah, he was very good. I definitely think step up two and a half will do him the world of good. Queensbrook uh, made it a double on the card for Gordon Elliott. And she was much better on Saturday than she was in her reappearance. She needed to be. I think that she's clearly going to be bang there come March in the Mayor's Hurdle. Do you think that she might always find one at that top level that's just too good? Or is this her year? Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with your first point there. I just think against some of the really good Willie Mullins horses, maybe even a Marie's Rock, that you're going to find something that will go and beat her. She's a very solid mare, very tough mare. She takes a bit of time to get fit, so it maybe wasn't a great surprise she was beaten on seasonal bow. She beat Heaven Help Us. She's entitled to do that. Heaven Help Us, a very good mare for Paul Hennessy, but I've kind of finally gotten to the end of the row with her, really. She doesn't win as much as she maybe should do for a horse of her ability. So Queen's Brook entitled to win and did so. Moving over to Cork on Sunday, and I know we spoke about um, absolute notions for Rob Corr and Gordon Elliott, but they also released another exciting youngster in Irish Point who won very, very well. I thought visually very impressive. Look, the, the form doesn't look brilliant with the second and the third finishing a long way behind Imagine on their previous start. But if Davy had asked Irish Point to win by 10, 15, 20 lengths further, he definitely had it there. I think that he could be potentially a graded horse and, and almost a grade one horse down the line. Yeah, uh, as you say, it wasn't a maybe great race, but I thought at the time watching Imagine Dane in Wexford that that looked a pretty good maiden hurdle. And, and so it's proving it's actually thrown up a winner or two since. So it's just one of those, perhaps Irish Point is a little bit better than you might think, even from looking at the, the form. As you say, he won very easily. He travelled with purpose. He travelled like a horse that has a bit of something about him. And I'll be very interested to see where he goes next time out might he be a horse maybe for Leopardstown or Limerick over Christmas time Darren's hope got the better of Manella Cruda in the grade two novice chase I think that the talking point going into it from our point was Manella Cruna on his chasing debut being chucked in at the deep end it was a brilliant story for Darren's hope I know uh, Bob Murphy who's the owner breeder and trainer of the horse had a fantastic day but looking at Manella Cruda he's probably the one to take forward from the race did you think that he jumped well and, and could maybe serve it up in those big grade ones come the, the, the Christmas and, and March? Yeah, it was a very good performance from, from Darren Soap. I, I'd be interested, I know you're probably siding on, on, on that fact with Manella Crooner that it, it, was a very, it was a very good run. He jumped pretty polished for his first run and he's come second in a grade two. I would have liked it an awful lot from Manella Crooner for 95% of the race. Uh, I know some people will say, and, and maybe that's your argument, that he maybe just ran out of race fitness against a race fit mare. He jumped two out into the lead in a pretty windy grade two and it reminded me of Fury Road in the Drinmore. Uh, I was standing down at the final fence with Dad and I just thought he chucked it in really. He had every entitlement to go and win that race. He should be miles better than Darren's Hope and just got worried out of it. I don't like horses worried out of it and as a result he would just have a little asterisk behind, beside his name at the moment for me. I wouldn't be in a great rush to be backing him in a grade one I must confess. Stateman won the Morgiana beating Sharjah. Saldia was third and Jesse Evans was fourth. I do think his jumping can be a bit slicker, but he was pretty good. And, and I actually think, looking at the interview that Willie gave Racing TV, talking about Vorban and Sigurhard, that Stateman, at this moment in time, I think Willie sees him as his main champion hurdle hope. And I know you were in love with him. Big fan of the horse, I'd agree with what you say. He came down to the first, he ballooned it, he jumped a little big at times. I know some people have been saying on Twitter that he'd be an absolute shoe-in for the Oracle, and perhaps that may be the case. But he's going to stay hurdling. 
And I, I just was very impressed. You know, I know Saldier and Charger. Well, Charger's a very good horse. Saldier maybe not as good as he used to be. But they're still not bad horses. And he's put them away like a piece of work at home, really. Like, he's put them away so, so easily. And then jostles when he hits the front. I just thought it was... It was a sign of a horse that, that has plenty in the tank, plenty of improvement to come. It will be needed, but I agree with what you say. You know, he, he looked a little bit windy, Willie Mullins, when being asked about Vauban and Sir Gerhard, certainly Vauban. Um, you wouldn't be necessarily clutching onto your champion hurdle ticket if you backed him. And as a result, like as a state man fan, you almost want Willie Mullins to have it all in his head that this is his horse. And he'll run at Leopardstown in the maths and he may go back to the Irish champion hurdle and then on to the champion hurdle. And the way it is at the moment, I can't see who would beat him in the Matheson hurdle because Honeysuckle won't be there. I just don't see who else would beat him. Yeah, I think Vauban will be given a very light campaign hunting around in those grade threes. I think there's a grade three over Christmas um, for four-year-olds only. Something like that would be perfect for him. And with Sir Gerhard, he's interesting because he's not been entered in any of these beginner chases. So if they're going to go chasing, it's going to be a late decision. I wonder if they might run him in the Hatton's Grace against Honeysuckle. Two and a half miles. Just see. It does look like Leopardstown will be next over Christmas, although I did see the Christmas hurdle was also talked about. Um, all I would say with, with State Man was you can tell he's schooled over fences. He's clearly had a pop over fences at home. They've, they've kept down the hurdles route and he was just a bit safe at them because he's used to the, the, the bigger jumps. I think that he will be fine and he'll get better in the jumping department throughout the year. He's six to one for the champion hurdle. Do you think that was maybe a slight bit of overreaction? Yeah, yeah it's skimpy. But as, uh, as we've said so many times in the last few episodes, an awful lot of prices are skimpy for what they should be. Uh, he's, he's, he's entitled to be third in the market, though. Um, whether he should still be 8-10 to 1 is, is probably the, the correct price. But uh, I wouldn't be throwing myself in at 6-1. to one, But no, I, I think he's a, he's a well-worthy adversary to the likes of Honeysuckle and Constitution. He'll, he'll put it up to them. Uh, we had another Potemps qualifier uh, as well over the weekend, this time at Punchestown, and plenty of horses qualified for the race now. Obviously, we've, we've still got plenty of qualifiers to come, so we'll see some more horses entered in there. Out of the ones that are qualified, would there be one that would be taking your fancy at all at this stage? Well, I, I really like the Cheltenham one, the form-wise, to be honest. Uh, it would be the one that would scream to me. I was absolutely devastated on Sunday. I had a for my standards, a relatively hefty bet on my immortal, and he's got an absolutely done in on the line by Paul Town, and on she wears it well. She wouldn't be a horse that would really do it for me come Cheltenham time. It would be like if I was to nominate two horses. I'm not sure, like I'm not coming away from what people know already, but it'd be shoot first and on Tyre. I thought on Tyre ran an extremely eye catching race for John Joe in that race. I'm not sure whether that was really the plan that day. You know, I think the plan was to get qualified. He stayed on when it was all over and shoot first looked like a horse that had plenty in hand on his handicap mark. Now, he's favourite for the per 10, 10 to 1 or something, which is a brutal price at this time of the year. But those were the two horses, and that's probably the one race, especially when you see what Botox has did on the weekend, that looks like really strong form in the book. I agree. So much so that I actually think the one to take out of that race was Salvador Ziggy for Gordon Elliott, 25 to 1. He was fourth at Cheltenham in October, dropped a pound to 144. He's going to go straight to the Potemps. He's going to miss the whole year. He's going straight there. He wasn't particularly revved up for Cheltenham in October, and they were absolutely delighted with his run. He's 25 to 1. Monday at Kempton, we saw the chasing debut of Lac de Constance for Dan Skelton. If you've seen the video that we made with Dan over the summer, you know that he thought this horse uh, was very, very good. He'd take a bit of time, and he looked seriously seriously good yeah he looked really really good i was actually looking back at that damn skeleton interview only a couple of days ago and he, he's actually given us a few absolute great nuggets in there he told us that gallia della toe was going to be stones better over fences she won on listed chase debut at bangor by half the track this horse was absolutely superb now his main market rival dived at the first and never really got into a rhythm for nichols summer eve maybe feeling the effects of that ascot fall but you couldn't be more happy with him, but as as people will have seen from Dan Skelton's interview afterwards, you'd be holding your jets on backing this horse for anything, really, because I think it's going to be likely, likely this year. I just think that they're taking it slowly with him because of what happened with My Drogo and Third Time Lucky, chucking them in the, at the deep end. I know My Drogo didn't really run in, in many graded races, but he ran uh, in those two novice chases at Cheltenham against good horses, 
and maybe it was just too soon and now obviously he's been off the track third time lucky he's been disappointing maybe they just want to take the time with him and, and look i think he's a three mile chaser down the line i think he could be a king george horse in, in two or three years time uh, but he's very good i think definitely very good you were impressed with western zephyr at ludlow weren't you yeah i really was this is a horse that maybe some people may not have seen uh, if you haven't seen it go and watch it out i would say he won a bumper then kind of ran a bit flat in the entry grade two bumper behind look away but made a thirdling debut on monday jumped super for charlie longston and sean bowen looks to be a strong stayer over two miles probably needs to a step up in trip in in better graded company in time but certainly a horse to keep the right side of i suspect will win another novice under a penalty next time Looking ahead then to this weekend, and we've got the Coral Gold Cup, the Hennessy, the Labricks Trophy, whatever you want to call it. That meeting at Newbury, it's very, very good. Often very informative. We have some good horses in the maiden hurdles. We should touch on the two-mile maiden hurdle on Friday. Jet Powered makes his hurdling debut. But it's not going to be a gimme. On paper, this looks quite a hot race. Itak Blue in there for the skeleton, Sir Alex Ferguson hails. He, I think he's their most expensive point-to-pointer that they've ever bought. So he would obviously go there with a lofty reputation. Uh, Givego, I think, might run at Lingfield, but uh, he's also been uh, declared for this race on Friday at Newbury. So he's highly thought of by the Gary Moore team. And then Joe Tizard runs a cool the dawn, and he brings good form into the race having finished second to Jin Coco of Harry Fries who then went on to finish second in the Greatwood so it could be a nice little maiden hurdle to start off with also worth mentioning the two and a half mile novice hurdle on the card uh, Paul Nichols has won this race the last two years one with Brave Man's Game one with Stage Star they both went on to win the shallow he often runs a very good horse there and he's running stay away Fay. so that could be a little pointer that he could be above average but the first race we're probably going to preview is the two and a half mile Berkshire and obviously Chase the grade two I know we don't want to just keep talking about Paul Nichols horses but he's in fabulous form at the moment and Stage Star is favourite here he was very impressive on chasing debut at Warwick I would expect Stage Star to get this job done yeah, you'd have to think so. Uh, he did it very, very impressively at Warwick, beat West Cork. It's not a bad old yardstick in his own right. I just don't think it's a great race in behind as well. I know Beauport won the Colin Parker, which was an excellent run uh, on his novice chase debut. I just fear against a horse like Stage Star that he might be just done for pace, Beauport. He may need three miles at graded level. Uh, that would be my impression on it. I don't know who on earth is back in Comprand at four to one for this race, given what he did at Exeter. Not only did he unseat Aidan Coleman at the first but acted like an absolute mule throughout the race uh, so it would be the, the the slightly more forgiving types than me and I am usually quite forgiving so stage star looks a I wouldn't say a penalty kick but he should be winning this race that's brutal at the long distance hurdle the grade two comes up next over three miles we have a last year's winner in there Thomas Darby we have Paisley Park champ Prashima who was very impressive in the West Yorkshire hurdle tricky little race to get a hold of is there one that you like here yeah, looks at uh, certainly. Uh, I think there's two horses I would want to be on side in this race. Uh, I know Prashima's favourite. Wouldn't be having him, personally speaking. I'm interested in Champ. I know that's going to be, you know, you might be bowled over by me saying that because I've, I've never been interested in Champ. I just think there is an angle with him fresh that may be worth trying. But really, I do look at this race, and I know sometimes we're a little bit biased in, in these respects, but... I can't believe Thomas Darby 7-1 to one in this race. I know he's a bit of a mule of a horse at times, but he won this race last year. I thought it was a really good run at Weatherby on reappearance, where he wouldn't have been completely stoked up. I know Prashima went away from him at the end, but that would have been Prashima's big day. And he'd had the run in the silver trophy as well. So he had race fitness on his side. One's 2-1, one, one's 7-1, to 15-2. to two. I know who I'd like to back, and it'd be Thomas Darby at the bigger price really tricky race to get a hold of because if the the champ of the long walk hurdle last year turns up i think he probably just wins i think he's better than all of these in class here but he's a year older prashima was impressive thomas darby won the race last year paisley park wouldn't be for me never really been for me it's really tricky i think i'll just let the race be run and absolutely resent myself when champ goes and, and wins because i absolutely <laughs> love that horse if you're a follower of the channel you know i do but moving on to saturday at newbury and we should touch on the three mile john frankham novice chase the grade two over three miles it looks to me like it'd be Janino bello versus time hill now time hill is 13 pounds superior but over fences do you think there's actually that much in it 
No, I don't think there is, probably. Uh, it would be an informative race more than anything. Gelino Bello kind of scraped in a little bit at Weatherby. Harry Cobden was taking things very handy that day. Uh, seemed to have plenty in the tank, but didn't seem to use it. And Time Hill won well, but was, was tired up the run-in. So hard to get a grasp on that. That's certainly one to sit back and have a watch. I would probably favour Gelino Bello myself. I think it all depends on, on what pace they go in the race. I think if this turns into a, a sprint, I think Time Hill will do Gelino Bello for pace. But if it's a proper thorough test, stamina test, I think Gelino Bello will have his number. Uh, but the feature of the whole weekend really is the Coral Gold Cup over three miles and two furlongs. Jericho Rock is one that I've been talking up all year for this race. He's 10 to 1. I put him up in the anti-post video, uh, the early season anti-post video, a couple of months ago. He was a much bigger price than he's come in. I'm very excited about him. I think he's going to take a good bit of beating off his mark. He was a brilliant run in the Ultima. And the fact that we've got horses like Chantry House at the top, who I think will run, means that Jericho Rock's running off an absolute featherweight. I think he could just be better and this race would be perfect for him the one danger i think well there's a couple of dangers obviously it's a very competitive handicap but remastered last year was going so well before coming down i was on him that day it was absolutely agonizing maybe if he was to turn up in same in similar form that he does have one of these in them but jericho rock from the same stable ah, he, he does it for me is there one in here that you really like now, there's two in there that I like. Uh, I think the Tizard's record in the race is, is there to be to stand up. They obviously won it with size in Tennessee a couple of years ago. Very unlucky in the race last year as well. Because Fiddler on the Roof was badly hampered by the fall of Remasters. Whether Remasters would have won if he stood up is, is another story. I think Fiddler on the Roof's got another very good chance here. I know he's high up in the weights. He's over 155. It's a big task. But as you say, with the likes of Chantry House in there, he's not carrying top weight. And he's just a solid horse. He came second off this mark at Ascot. He came fifth in the National where he perhaps didn't quite stay off this mark. Decent enough pipe opener. Over hurdles at Kempton where he looked a bit ring rusty and that would have brought him on plenty. He's 8-1 to one, and I quite like the horse that's closely tied in with your horse Jericho Rock Oscar Elite at 10 11 to 1 harry copton takes the ride which is a great bonus at the moment given how well harry copton's riding he gave this horse a great spin when third in the ultima him and jericho rock i think we're both off 138 today the ultima and they're both off 139 uh, come saturday so it'll be very interesting i know we've uh, maybe a length or two to find on jericho rock but maybe we'll be able to turn that round i'd like to hope that the six or seven pound swing would give us a chance at turning the tables with Carrick Rambler, and he's a short enough price for a handicap like this. So the two Tizard horses in there, Fiddler on the Roof and Oscar Elite against the field. Another top race this weekend is the Fighting Fifth up at Newcastle, and today it did get a boost. I think Newcastle have benefited massively uh, from Ascot's ground fiasco last weekend. It looks like Constitution Hill will join Epitont. Yeah, I'd, you'd think so. Uh, Epitont, to be honest, has. Has done well, obviously, over the last couple of years. She's won plenty of grade one. She's won a champion hurdle. But she's always been a little bit disappointing in this race, given that in previous years it's looked penalty kick territory. She just hasn't been overly impressive in this race so far in the last couple of years in Constitution Hill. Look, you'd like to hope that, you know, if he can't beat Epitant, there's no chance he's beaten the mayor over in Ireland. So uh, you'd hope Constitution Hill does turn up. That's what we're looking for first and foremost. And he puts in one of those sparkling displays that we're, fingers crossed, going to be greeted to a few times this season. Have you got a fancy in the Troy Town on Sunday? Yeah, I really like one in this, actually. Hopefully a little bit of rain around, and fingers crossed it doesn't get declared also for the race at Newbury on Saturday. A horse called Velvet Elvis uh, for Tom Gibney. Darrow O'Keefe will take the ride. He's currently 20 to 1 best price. I think it's a cracking price. He was disappointing in the Munster National down at Limerick uh, on his reappearance. I'm just hoping that he needed the run that day. He won a course and distance novices handicap by half the track last year on heavy ground. So he maybe wants a drop of rain. I know there's a few horses in there that likes a frontal assault. It's got a great chance. It'll be three to one. Can't be back in a three to one chance for the Troy Town. I don't believe. Velvet Elvis is 20 to one. I'd be very disappointed if he didn't run a big race at a track that he loves. A few high profile runners across the weekend that we're not going to go into too much detail about, but they are running a Saturday Goran a two and a half mile beginners chase. We've got the likes of Journey with me in there, Sam Felicien, Manella Kakuna, What Do You Want? Plenty of exciting novice chases for this season. Uh, there is a £450,000 point to point purchase, rare edition. He looks like he's going to take his second start over hurdles at Doncaster on Saturday. Fasal Vega entered in the two mile maiden hurdle at Goran on Saturday. 
Beachcomber, who's a horse that uh, I've been involved in. I've been involved in a couple of horses with Charlie Post, uh, pin hooking and selling them on. One of them was Mount Burnett, who sold Chris Gordon, won his bumper. I actually think Beachcomber, we sold to John Joe O'Neill privately after John Joe Jr. came and sat on him. I think that he could be a little bit better. He's entered in a bumper at Bangor on Saturday and Carlisle on Sunday. Might need a bit of time, but he could be quite a nice one to keep in the tracker going forward. Grange Clare West uh, looked to have so much ability before his setback. He's in at Navin on Sunday. And then American Mike is also likely to reappear in the Monkfield Novice Hurdle, the grade three at Navin that Gordon Elliott loves to use as a springboard for his smart Novice Hurdle. Sam Crow won the race not so long ago. But now it's time for best bets. No pressure. Well, try my best anyway. Don't take it as gospel, please. But uh, I've got five again for the weekend, dotted across the weekend. Two of them are running today, as you're watching this, at Turles. One in the 135, two miles seven. A rated novice hurdle, quite like Harry Desangre in this. He's five to one best price at the moment. Whether you want to back that each way or win only is up to you. It's a three-place race. I think if he beats, you know, obviously Favre de Champadou is a is a very good yardstick. He's the favourite, but he was impressive at Wexford. I think there's more to come from him. The next race after that, the 210 at Thurla St. Donna. I, we went down by around that much as a best bet a few weeks ago for Tom Cooper and Brian Cooper. She's going up in tr- trip to 27. I think she'll take a lot of beating. She may well be favourite. Newbury on Saturday, the 120, the 26 handicap chase, the kind of the filler in race uh, before the Carl Gold Cup. Quite like Killer Kane for the Tizards. I'm hoping for a good Tizard weekend. Uh, he's 7 to 1. I think this in between trip will suit him. 155, the competitive handicap hurdle at Newbury on Saturday. Uh, Washington for Ollie Murphy at 14 to 1. Goes up in trip for the first time. Ollie's been going on about having this horse up in trip and he ran well in reappearance at Ascot. Probably does need a high at this stage and then I've made the case for the fifth and final one which again comes on the Sunday in Ireland the Troy Town Velvet Elvis 20 to 1 and like the last couple of weeks the best bet is going to be the one on the Sunday Velvet Elvis at 20s for the Troy Town 20 to 1 that for Andrew this weekend uh, I've got four two of them come uh, from Newbury on Friday Bakestown for the Skeletons in the 2.30 he's 4-1 to one. I think it was a great reappearance in the old Roan Chase at Aintree I think we'll come on for that and this race is chalk and cheese compared to that race at Aintree I think if he can't win here they'll be struggling to win with him this season also later on in the card in the 3.40 steal a march for Nicky Henderson and His Majesty at 11-2 to two. I think that he could take a good bit of beating at Newbury on Saturday I'm taking on Killer Kane and I'm going to back Dublin 4 for Fergal O'Brien, eight to one each way in the 120. Great form around Newbury. I think he's won over course and distance before. He's also won over two furlong short. So I do think there's still a bit of work in his mark. And then Navin on Sunday, she's slowly becoming my favourite mare in training. Jungle Pros at 150. Look, she won off 109 the other day, but she won with plenty in hand. She's up to 125. It's an enormous hike. And this might be the last time we go to the well with her. She, she, she's done nothing wrong so far. We put her up twice. She's won twice. And hopefully Jungle Pros can go and do the business once again. But there we go. If you do enjoy this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you are going to Newbury, enjoy yourself. If you're going to Navan or any of the races over the weekend, please do enjoy. We'll see you soon.